First of all, if you, you need to decide if you're going to be more comfortable on the floor, on a bed, or in a chair. And if you're going to be in a chair, it needs to be a chair where if it has wheels that you lock the wheels to the wheels so you're not going to roll on the chair. So a stable chair. So give everybody a moment to decide what you'd like to do. And if you choose to be on the floor or on a bed, uh, please bring with you uh, like a little hand towel, a small towel. It could be a larger towel, but you don't need that much. And it also could be like a folded t-shirt, perhaps, if there's no towel handy where you are. So some options. Some options. So Cynthia is going to, oh, great. Cynthia's going to demonstrate, first of all, the setup for the floor. Perfect. Perfect. So if you're going to be choosing to be on the floor or on a bed, we're going to set up just like we did if you joined us last session, last week, last Thursday, that you could put a foot on the wall and the foot of that leg that's on the wall, that leg would be bent at a 90 degree angle which is to say that your leg and the floor and the wall would make like a box shape, right? Like a box shape. And then the other foot would be on the floor. So that'll be the setup for if you're on the floor or on a bed. And then Cynthia is gonna demonstrate too, the setup for being on a chair. And we have Charo with us too, wonderful, welcome. So nice to see you. And if you're gonna to choose to be on a chair, you wanna make sure that you're, again, your chair, chair is not, uh, the wheels are locked, so you're not gonna go anywhere. And you can face a wall, have a little bit of space between yourself and the wall. And you're gonna to wanna to sit, uh, not toward the front edge of the chair, not toward the back edge of the chair, but someplace in the middle, someplace in the middle of the chair that your feet still touch the ground. Very important that your whole foot touches the ground. Good, so now if you're a little confused about any of these instructions, we have Cynthia demonstrating from the chair and with Jaro demonstrating from the floor, the beautiful angle here. Very nice. So let's all take just a moment uh, and just rest here for a second. So if your foot is on the wall, just place that foot on the floor. And if you're in a chair, maybe decide, may, might feel better to kind of wiggle forward on the chair so that you could sit up or wiggle back in the chair so that your back is against the back of the chair. To take a moment just to notice yourself for a moment. Maybe the most important question in these somatic experiences, right? It's just beginning to become aware of how you are in this moment. So perhaps you take a cleansing breath or two and just notice what's it like to breathe. And notice your hips and how they meet either the floor or the bed or the chair. And it might be really easy to notice your hips, or maybe if you kind of take a cleansing breath again and pay attention to your hips, the motion of your breath might give you some information about your hips and the way that your hips are touching the surface that they're touching. So for instance, is one hip heavier on that surface than the other? and bring some awareness to your shoulder blades. And if you're on the floor or the bed, your shoulder blades are definitely touching the floor or bed, at least they should be. And if you're on a chair, maybe your shoulder blades are touching the back of the chair. And you might begin to notice again, which shoulder blade feels heavier is making a deeper impression into the surface that it's touching, that you are touching.
And if you're on the floor, you might begin to roll your head just a little bit left and right, right and left, just super slowly. And if you're in a chair, you might just lightly turn your head a little bit in one direction, the other direction, just to begin to notice, is there a direction that feels easier? Is it easier to roll or turn your head to the left or to the right? And you'll have to go really slowly to notice more than likely. And that's one of these gifts of bones for life. That moving slowly helps us to begin to notice more of ourselves so that then we can decide what's best for us, All right? And that's gonna be one of the key learnings in Bones for Life, and especially in this three-part series of really taking care of yourself, of doing only what's easy. If any of us invite something that doesn't feel so easy for you, you know you have the option, we talked about last week, of simply imagining the movement in your imagination. And you'd be surprised at how much benefit you can get by simply doing that. Good. So let's let go of that rolling of your head. Maybe take a cleansing breath or two again. And for those that are on the floor, begin to bring one foot to the wall. Leave one foot on the floor if you're on the floor or bed. And if you're in a chair, bring your feet to a, a small step position, which is to say one foot is slightly closer to the wall than the other, maybe not even touching the wall. And sit in such a way if you're in a chair that you're sitting kind of in the middle of the chair seat so that you can lean back slightly. Your upper back is slightly leaning against the chair. And that foot that is either on the wall or on the floor further away from you, closer to the wall, can you just barely begin to press into that foot as you exhale and then release the press and inhale. And do this number of times. And we're looking for about 20% effort in anything we do in Bones for Life so that we can sense more. So maybe try pressing with half as much effort. And maybe half as much effort again. And can you feel, is there a response when you press with this 20% effort or less through this foot that's on the wall or this foot that is forward in the step position, if you're in a chair, something do, is there some response in your hips or in your middle back, or in your chin. Good. Let's all let it go for a second so that let that foot that was either on the wall or forward come to an easy place. So the foot that's on the wall, if you're on the floor or bed, bring that foot back to the floor. And take a minute, especially friends that are on the floor or bed, just to notice your head. Is your head comfortable there? Or does it feel like you would be, if it feels like your head's really hanging back kind of far, that's where that towel, that towel could be helpful, that you fold that towel up to place underneath your head. And just to be clear, underneath your head and not underneath your shoulders so that your face maybe feels a little bit more parallel with the ground, like your forehead and your chin are on the same level as the floor, the same, uh, they're at the same relationship with the floor, your floor, your head and your chin, your forehead and your chin. That if there were like a little piece of cardboard with a hole in the middle for your nose, that piece of cardboard resting on your forehead and your chin would be more parallel with the floor. Good. So let's bring that same foot to the wall or that same foot forward if you're in a chair. And begin to lightly press with that foot as you exhale. You always press and exhale at the same time. Release the press and inhale. And let's start to become curious about how we're using that foot on the wall. Can you kind of feel that the 
maybe it, the press starts with something close to the heel, but then starts to really get move more toward the space between your big toe and your next toe. But then maybe something starts to happen with your chin more readily. So for instance, we can even invite that. So how about as you press your foot into the surface and you exhale, you let your chin tip away from your chest. And it's subtle, right? It's subtle, it's small. So just to repeat that again, you press your foot into the wall as you exhale and you let your chin tip away from your chest. You release the press and inhale and your chin tips back towards your chest. Can you feel that the curves of your spine are changing as you press with your foot and exhale and let your chin tip away from your chest? These curves are changing. Of course, changing constantly. Changing when we breathe, changing when we walk, changing when we do anything. But can you begin to sense what's happening for yourself here? Very nice. Let's let it go for a second. Let yourself rest. The foot that's on the wall, come back to the floor. And the foot that's forward, maybe it feels good. If you're in a chair, maybe that foot forward feels good staying there or place your foot in a comfortable place as long as your feet are still on the floor supporting you. Good, and if it's easy for you, maybe you want, you're curious about using the other foot. So can you bring the other foot to the wall? Or if you're in a chair, bring that other foot slightly forward. And again, that legs, the leg, if your foot is on the wall, the leg is bent at a 90 degree angle. You could, those of us that are on the floor, you could interlace your fingers together so interlace your fingers together and slide your hands underneath your head to lift your head to actually look at that leg. Even fold your elbows up to cradle your head a little bit more and look at that leg. And if you need to wiggle a little closer, do that. If you need to wiggle a little further away, do that. If it's 90 degrees and you're not so comfortable and you feel like, oh, I need to wiggle my hips back a little further, go ahead and do that. You have to add a degree or two to be more comfortable. Nice. And then you can lower your head and release your hands from underneath your head. And with this foot that is on the wall or this foot that's forward and from your chair, begin to softly, easily, 20% effort or less, press and exhale. Release the press and inhale. And you do it a number of times, right? Slowly, you press with that foot as you exhale, release the press and inhale, and then start to notice your chin. So as you press with that foot and X the press with the foot on the wall, the foot forward in the step position from a chair, press and exhale and start to let your chin tip away from your chest. And then you release the press and inhale, your chin tips back towards your chest. And those of you in a chair, you could maybe place your, like the ball of that foot that's forward on the wall and your heel maybe staying on the floor and see if that makes it easy. You might need to wiggle your chair forward or back to make that easier. I should say too, if you're in a chair, it might be easier if your hands are resting on your legs too your left hand on your left leg, your right hand on your right leg. If you're on the floor, probably easiest if your arms are just resting on the floor, but they could be on your hips or your belly if that's more comfortable. So this is a wave, isn't it? We're putting a wave through ourselves. One of the key moves in walking it might not seem like it so much. We're going to play with this a little bit more. Good, and maybe you'd like to try some faster ones, just slightly faster, kind of plop, 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 plop. 
plop, plop. Soft and gentle. Only in a range that's easy for you so that you have a, an experience of yourself that's nice, right? You're giving yourself this gift. And then maybe some really slow ones again, where you feel the bones of that foot that are on the wall or on the floor, really sinking into the surface, slowly, steadily sinking as if your foot were on wet mud, that, like the day after a rain, and you're just seeking that more solid surface beneath that soft top, the softer upper surface of that mud. Your bones get curious, like where is the where is the stability where you have to keep going slowly, slowly, slowly with that press. Very nice. Let's all let it go. Take a little pause. Foot that's on the on the wall, bring it back to the floor and the. So both feet are on the floor for all of us. Just take a pause just to notice, is there a change in the way that you are resting here? For instance, what's it like to breathe? You might even roll your head a little bit if you're on the floor again, just to see if that's easier, softly left and right. And if you're in a chair, just softly turning left and right small range just to see if that something is different. Might be easier to notice if you're on the floor bed for this rolling of your head or turning of your head, but even a chair could be okay here. Good. And bring the Let's let that go for a second and bring that first foot to the wall. And if you're on a chair, that foot could be just forward, or maybe you're now curious about putting the ball of the foot on the wall and the heel probably on the floor. I think you're going to be happiest if that heel is on the floor. And just begin to create your wave again, like we just did before, which is to say, you press your foot in the wall as you exhale and you let your chin tip away from your chest. And you start to get more curious about that space between your big toe and your next of that foot that's on the wall or the foot that's, prep, the foot that's pressing for all of us. Has this been improved? Is it now a little clearer than before? For those of you that I can see, it looks a lot clearer. So you have an intelligent nervous system. It's ready to figure things out. So your life can be easier. You can do all the things you want to do. Good. And let's pause right there. Keep that foot where it is. Just let go of the pressing. And what if you just barely begin to, and if your foot is on the, let's see. If you're in a chair, maybe bring both feet back to the floor. Those of us that are on the floor or bed, uh, keep your foot on the wall. See, so one foot on the wall, one foot on the floor. And just begin to lift that foot that was just pressing, just barely from the surface, and then place it back. And then lift the other foot and place it back. And now you're walking, aren't you? So you're just barely lifting a foot, placing it back, barely lifting a foot and placing it back. And maybe you start to get curious now that you know the pattern here of not so much the foot that leaves the surface, but the foot that begins to press. Do you notice that when that foot presses, which makes it easier to lift the other foot, that something interesting begins to happen through your ribs. These ribs are so important for walking. Can you feel them changing based on which foot presses and which foot lifts? So we have one foot on the wall. If those of us that are on the floor, one foot on the wall, one foot on the floor. Good. Let's pause here for just a second. And 
those of us that are on the floor, can you keep your elbows on the ground, but fold your forearms up so your palms kind of face each other? And for those of you that are in a chair, depending on the chair you've chosen, you might begin to be able to feel like the backs of your arms or maybe your elbows are touching the back of the chair some way, only if that's easy. You might need to, if it's not so easy in the chair you're in, you might just imagine it. And then just begin that walking again and see as you begin to walk your feet. One foot lifts from its surface, the other foot presses, and then they, they switch, right? That's what walking is. In the touch of your elbows on the ground or on the chair or your backs of your arms, does that give you some information about your ribs moving? And maybe you let go of trying to do anything particularly with your chin. You just let your chin respond to this walking. Just so you sense what's happening through yourself. And then if it feels right, especially those of you on the floor or bed, you could extend your arms up toward the ceiling and continue this walking. And those of you that are in a chair, you could begin, you could see Cynthia's trying out with her arms above her head. You could also have your arms reaching just forward, see what that's like. So a couple options just to see if you can get a sense of these ribs moving. As, as a result of what you're doing with your feet. Yeah, very nice. Let's all let it go. Let your arms rest in an easy place. And your feet rest in an easy place. Take a pause, a cleansing breath or two. So the purpose of a nervous system is movement. Evolutionary biologists are now telling us, they're guessing anyway, their best guess at the moment is movement in that movement helps us to do the things we want to do, right? Certainly breathing is movement. We need that to continue, but to be able to move ourselves places in efficient ways, in easy ways that require the least amount of effort, right? So that we can continue doing all the things we want to do. And here we're giving ourselves, our nervous system, a few different experiences, certainly, to begin to sort through with those ever clever neurons, begin to sort through, is there something I could do, something I'm doing here in this experience that could be helpful for walking, for moving, for getting in and out of a car, for reaching for something? Could all these things that we're playing with here make our life easier in some perhaps a bewildering way, like what in the world could any of these things we're doing, how could that be helpful? We're gonna to have to find out. So let's place, uh, for those of us on the floor or bed, place the other foot on the wall, the second foot. So you have one foot on the wall, one foot on the floor. And those of you in a chair, you might place uh, the second foot so that the ball of the foot and the space between the big toe and the next, touching the wall, and begin to create your wave again. So you press your foot in the wall as you exhale and you let your chin tip away from your chest. And if you feel like, goodness, I'm still not sure if this wave is happening, try pressing half as much again. You re keep reducing the effort until you suddenly feel like, oh, wait a minute, now I feel like my foot pressings just all my, automatically starts to carry my chin away from my chest. And another cue, another idea could be that you, as you press less, you press slowly and more steadily with that foot, the foot that's touching the wall or the foot that you're pressing with super slow, like that foot sinking slowly into the surface. And maybe your wave now is getting even clearer. Feeling how these curves of your spine are changing, that when you 
press with this foot, it does something with press with this foot on the surface, wall or floor. And it changes your low back, doesn't it? And it changes that space behind your neck, doesn't it? Maybe you're even able to tell that it changes your ribs. Beautiful. Let's let, let it go for a second. Let this foot that's on the wall rest on the floor again. And then return that same foot to its to the surface. So the second foot comes back to the wall. Or if you're in a chair and finding that it's easier to have your foot on the floor, you can do that. So your second foot on that surface, on the wall or on the floor. And then let's, let's begin to walk again. You lift the foot from the wall and place it back. You lift the foot from the floor and place it back. If you're in a chair and finding that not so comfortable, then you could just have both feet on the floor. To really sense into yourself what's right for you, which one is more comfortable. You have two choices. We're really three choices, right? At least three choices. Foot on the wall, or both feet on the floor, or sitting and imagining. Those are at least three choices, right? At least three choices. Or even deciding that it's not right for you, that you might be more curious just watching. Always have choices. Good, and then let's pause with this walking and begin to, those that are on the floor, bring that, fold your, keep your elbows on the ground, fold your palms so that they face each other, your elbows and forearms stay on the ground, those in their chair, maybe you let your arms kind of just slightly move back and at least toward the back of the chair, they may or may not be able to touch, and then begin your walking, lift a foot, press a foot down, lift a foot, press it down and begin to get curious about the foot that presses. That when that foot presses, it makes it easier to lift that other foot, doesn't it? That other foot automatically wants to leave the surface. And you might start to get curious without trying to change anything, like which foot likes pressing more? Which foot likes lifting more? And then you might like to stay here and continue with this, or you might to like to extend your arms. So those on the floor bed, you reach up toward the ceiling, your head stays on the ground. Those that are in a chair, your arms could be overhead, might be lovely, or your arms could be forward, could be lovely, and just simply begin to walk and feel that when one foot presses, what's the response through your ribs? The ribs that are touching the back of the chair or the floor, or it could be, you might be able to sense what's happening with the ribs as they come into your breastbone, your sternum. Beautiful. A lot going on in walking, isn't there? Let's all take a little rest. Sense a cleansing breath or two for yourself. Notice your hips as they touch the surface that they're on, the floor, the bed, or the chair. Similar to before or different? Does one still feel heavier that it's pressing more into the surface? Or maybe not, maybe it's the other one now. Or maybe they both feel more similar to each other. You feel more similar from side to side. Bring your awareness to your shoulder blades. Similar to before, different. Again, if it's not so easy to notice these places, even a cleansing breath might help you to sense more deeply into these, these spaces within yourself. 
And those that are on the floor, you might roll your head a little bit one direction, the other direction. Those that are in a chair, you can just softly begin to let your chin turn left and right, right and left, your face left and right, right and left, just softly in an easy range, just to see if there's some difference, something easier. Was the side that wasn't so easy to roll to or turn to, is it now easier? Or maybe not. Maybe one of the other processes that we'll explore today or this coming Thursday might begin to solve that question for yourself. Very nice. Let's all let it go for a second. And those that are on the floor in your own time, can you begin to roll to a side? So you have both feet on the floor and you roll to a side. And then you might need to kind of wiggle away from the wall a little bit to slowly bring yourself up to seated and take your time in all these places. Those that are in a chair, you might start to kind of walk your hips forward on the chair so that you're a little closer to the front edge of the chair. You might need to also slide your chair away from the wall a little bit, right? So you've got a little room for yourself. And take your time, always take your time to slowly bring yourself to stand. Those that know to, how to spiral to stand, maybe from Cynthia's video, you can spiral to stand. And once you're standing, take your time to arrive there. Just simply stand for a second. Place your feet on the most solid surface that you can rest upon easily. That you can then feel, is there a difference in the quality of your standing? Does your head feel, I don't know, does your head feel any lighter? Or does it feel like you're resting on your feet any differently than before? Good. It's right for you to take, take a little walk around. If you need to walk away from your computer, it's sometimes nice to be able to walk a little further. So like if you have a hallway nearby that you can leave the room and walk down the hallway so that you can begin to feel what's different, what's different about yourself. Did this little process that we explored that we call WAVE in Bones for Life, did it offer you some new possibilities in your walking, something different about your walking, something easier?